Jamaica is a born same year as me, I think, uh, back in 1970s. But I think we have quite different history. Um, I'm, I'm from Singapore all the way. Um, he came from Malaysia, um, JB, yeah. uh, Johor Bahru. Um, and at the ten, eight of, age of 10, he came to Singapore. And he has been here since. Um, he actually didn't, like most writers, get an uh, art degree or humanities degree. Um, he actually is from the sciences, computer science specifically. And then at some point after that, he he really uh, became a, a literary person, artistic person. So, I mean, he kind of break the stereotype in many ways. Um, Dave, of, you will know um, from his first book, Gone Case, um, first novel, Gone Case. I think a lot of people, when we talk about the novels that came out in the 1990s in Singapore, they like to talk about people like uh, Darren Shaw, Alvin Saad, um, um, or uh, slightly later, someone like Rina Poon. But I always feel like Dave has that, his writing has that uh, uh, ability to, to lock into the psyche of the heartlander in Singapore in a way you don't get much, or, or at least you get in a different way from the other writers. Uh, and something a bit more melancholic. Um, and uh, I, I, I wish more people did talk about him. He's like the, the he's kind of, how should I put it? He's the, he's the secret in Singapore right? writing in many ways. Uh, uh, you know, if you discover him, you, you find it such a joy to have heard somebody write in such a way that uh, you are familiar with if you live in the heartlands. Um, conversely, uh, if you have not heard of him and, and you discover him much later, you, you wonder why you haven't heard more about Dave Chua. So I am really personally very pleased uh, uh, to introduce him to you. Um, Dave, you also will know, uh, I have uh, a series of books, um, uh, of graphic novels over there. Volume one and two adapted, uh, 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 um, um, adapted about which is the novel I was mentioning to you um, from a decade back. Uh, that has been ad adapted to graphic novel in the comics form, in um, by Ko uh, Ko Hong uh, Ko Ko Hong Ping, um, just two three years ago, and I think the project was completed last year. Yeah. So um, it is now available the whole book. Um, it is quite something to 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 see someone else someone else's interpretation of that novel um, and it comes out in a different form for of, of, of mm -hmm. people who like that genre so that is also there but specifically the book that has been launched just last year I don't, last month sorry <laughs> last month is the, the official launch like oh yeah so say the, the book was published last last year it was officially launched uh, 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 last month right. yes uh, uh, the book has uh, been a while, uh, around the world um, the beating and other stories the beating itself is a, is a story that uh, is based on a story that won an award uh, also a decade back and he's, he basically sat on it and revised many versions of it and then he finally got it out this year. I mean this is a good question to ask him later on why he sat on set on that story so long. And then after that along the way he wrote other stories and um, after this period of silence, uh, about a decade of silence, more, uh, more than a decade of silence, he, he, he came up with this book um, which is again uh, one of those remarkable books once you read it, uh, you, you know what I mean. I cannot explain how uh, how deep he goes with these stories, uh, how um, heart-wrenching a lot of the stories are. Um, the beating and other stories have been, uh, has, has just uh, been long listed for the Frank O'Connor Book Prize. Uh, again, a, 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 an achievement in itself. And I really hope that he goes into the shortlist and all. Um, so, before much ado, can we put our hands together and welcome mm -hmm. Thanks, Green, and thanks for the invite, uh, Kenny and the bear and the cats, of course. <laughs> <laughs> apologies, for being late, apologies for being late. I was giving my nephew some Chinese oral tuition, <laughs> so it was a bit hard to get out of uh, Lovina. Uh, is, is, is this your niece here? No, no, no. She had brought along and we would have. She had torn down Chinese? the place. Huh? She had down the place. <laughs> so she's chasing after the cats. Okay, now how I'm going to do this is I'll start to, by the ball rolling as always, asking him about his uh, uh, younger days all the way to the present. But along the way, please, if you have questions, ask. Um, um, this, this is going to be as informal as it can get, uh, so uh, free to in, be free to interrupt. Uh, if there are some bugging questions, you feel there's some inconsistencies in what he's saying, you know, please poke holes and get those things out, right? Uh, I just want to ask Dave, really, um, how was his, uh, uh, the begin, uh, how was his, uh, early days, like, I mean, having come from Malaysia to Singapore, did you experience uh, uh, something you find unique? I think 
coincidentally, when I came to Singapore, um, I stayed with my uncle around here in Kim Tian Road, in a, I guess it's public housing. Uh, even though I wouldn't quite call it a flat, it was more a walk-up apartment. I think now it's a condo. Um, so I guess, you know, you're staying at another person's house, you tend to be a bit more careful about what, what you can do and what you can't do uh, in such a location. Um, so from primary to secondary school, I, I moved between different uncles. Uh, after Catholic High, uh, I was Diamond High and MDJ. Uh, I stayed with some another uncle at uh, Rain Parade. And, uh, again, I guess, um, just staying a bit away from my actual home, which is JB. Uh, I, I guess it's a different experience. Is, is, there, is there a reason why you come to Singapore uh, at that time? What was it? What, who made the decision for you? Um, well, all of the parents, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I, at that age, I guess you have 10, you have no great desire to be told that you have a better future at another place. <laughs> um, I quite enjoyed. Uh, studying in Malaysia at the time, JB, coming to Singapore. Ironically, I was demoted one year for uh, my English, so I had to go back from Standard 5 to Primary 4. Um, despite, I think, they said I do quite well in English, but still not good enough. Mm. So I was always a, a year older than everyone else, uh, up to JC2. You have to do second language as well, and yeah. it's Malay or Chinese? Chinese. So, ironically, I went to Diamond High, and uh, I was the last, uh, I was in the, one of the express classes. Well, Dharma High, of course, had become a SEP school. And uh, yeah, I guess certain school administrators didn't, have, didn't, didn't hold an express class in very high regard. And uh, we always, I guess, got finger pointed and bore the brunt of certain, the blame of certain things. When, when you moved from uh, Malaysia to Singapore, was the shift too abrupt for you? Did you get into some uh, culture shock at the age? No, I'm not sure whether at then you feel... I think it's definitely a culture shock. Um, maybe adapting to staying with your uncles and um, you know, the different rules that you have to bear. Um, living with different um, people. I mean, um, I fought with my cousins a lot as well when, when the lights went out. So, um, and of course Singapore itself was was quite different, the education and all that. Um, I can't say that it was, uh, first thing of course, I felt a bit deflated, you know, that I pushed back one grade. Uh, but gradually I guess I can learn to adapt and uh, adjust, but it also, um, the subjects are definitely different. Mm -hmm. And the expectations were also kind of different, so it was a bit of an adjustment for me. Do you find do you find uh, living in a different country at a, 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 a bit intimidating, scary? Uh, I guess not so much. I guess a lot of JB, JBNs are, are of course quite familiar with Singapore, and uh, it's the it's a glimmering city that they see at night across the sea, uh, full of prospects and uh, possibilities. Um, so. I I guess after a while I adjusted the thought of coming to Singapore and uh, the possibilities. Mm -hmm. I mean I have two elder brothers and uh, And they're here as well? Uh, my eldest brother is still here. I came here and studied in UWC. Mm -hmm. uh, my second brother studied... What is JWC? UWC. UWC, okay. United World College. The United World College. Yeah. My second brother stayed on in JB. Mm -hmm. And my sister also studied in JB. So I don't know if my... Families seem to have different paths for all of us. Yeah. Like we some and do you guys connect, or do you find that uh, because you all take different paths, um, the family feels a bit, uh, at least the relationship, a bit fragmented, a bit alienating? A bit fragmented, undoubtedly. Like. I mean, we're, uh, we're still close, of course. I mean, I just came from my brother's place. I guess the things we talk about are very, okay, how are you doing? Uh, What's new? But we don't really talk on a personal, personal basis. But is it because you chose uh, a literary, uh, artistic path uh, rather than, I mean, not, not the, really. I, I wouldn't say go to say go so far as to say I, I, I chose a literary path. Mm. Um, I mean, they all been very supportive and everything. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I don't.
don't see any fragmentation. I just think that because we've been living such separate lives, uh, it's undoubtedly a bit <laughs> fragmented. Okay, so, so okay, how does it go? Primary school, what was it? Catholic uh, High. Catholic High. Dunman High. Dunman, and then JC was... So Victoria Junior College. Uh, Victoria, okay. Yeah. And then after that, I think most of the Singaporean male friends would have gone on to um, uh, the army, yeah. uh, which you didn't. Yeah. At that time, you go. You went to do your uh, degree. Yeah. Uh, after that, I went to study at Berkeley, mm. uh, electrical engineering and computer science. Mm. Uh, I guess it was there that I kind of exposed to a a more liberal education, a wider spectrum of uh, subjects than uh, we've been exposed here. So I did some lit classes, some anthropology, which was actually what I kind of wanted to study, and. Uh, it just opened up a lot more possibilities. Were you exposed to literature before? In this yeah, I, I was. I took literature at uh, O-level and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of excellent teachers along the way who, who pushed us to go beyond the curriculum, to read beyond. And uh, showed possibilities. But I, there was, I can't say at the time I, I wrote that much uh, mm -hmm. outside of school. It was just uh, the usual. You just studied. Did my best. When when do you start to write creatively? When I came back from Berkeley, um, sorry, I wrote a bit for Big O, the pop culture magazine, uh, and also because um, there was a Golden Point short story competition, which um, I entered. Um, so I got first prize for that with. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Jin Tae was it that year? And with the story Father's Gift. Yeah, Father's Gift. Father's Gift, by the way, is the earliest version of the big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, he, he revised it many times, as he, I, I believe he, uh, he will tell you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that encouraged me. And uh, at the time, the Singapore Literature, Literature Prize was for unpublished manuscripts. Mm -hmm. So the next year, I, I was in between jobs. I worked for SIA as an analyst programmer for about one and a half years. So I got, I just uh, quit the job and then took three months off, and then uh, wrote Gong Case over a period of three months, mm. and then uh, submitted it for uh, the lit prize where where it got accommodation. I think Tangerine was the winner that year. Colin ah, Chong. Colin Chong. Yeah. Um, what what made you want to write Gong Case? I think various reasons. Um, Firstly, I guess I have a competitive nature, and you know, you after winning the golden point, I was encouraged uh, to do do to try and try something a bit more. And of course, everybody says they want to write a book, so okay, let's try to write a book. Um, so that came first, as opposed to the idea of or the, the the narrative of the story itself. I would say if there was no competition, it'd be very hard for me to get down to it because I'm the kind of person who needs a deadline. <laughs> and I don't have a deadline, it's, it just falls. Um, so, but after that, I was thinking about what to write about, and I thought um, it, was, it would be interesting to tackle something in a housing estate kind of landscape because I thought nothing much had been done in that kind of sphere so far. Um, there definitely have been, of course, programs like Arthur Yops, uh, Two Mothers and HTV Playground, but in terms of pros, uh, it was virgin territory, yeah. and you, you wonder why, because I mean, even I mean, at the time, most Singaporeans are living in housing estates. And I thought there's a lot of life and a lot of things to write about uh, in, in such a uh, arena. How much is that teenage boy in that novel gone case? You, I think it's a composite of me and various characters. Uh, undoubtedly, I, I'm sure a lot of us have experienced uh, the passing of our grandparent and so on. Uh, so it's reflected. Um, and of course, living in a HDB um, housing estate, that was definitely I I inside the book. Um, so I'd say maybe 60, 50, 60%. Mm. Yeah, I guess also I'm. A bit of young as well, but I guess less of young. I won't pretend to be a really bad boy and stuff. Like that. But he wasn't really also. He was just cheeky. An alter ego, a possibility of how maybe I could. I, I suppose I could turn out in a way. 
Okay, I'm gonna see whether anybody else wants to ask a question at this point. Yes, yes. Um, you, you see this stu study that Dunman High in Victoria JC, that's in the east of Singapore. Yeah. And um, notably, Dunman High is a SAP school. Actually, my elder brother went to Dunman High, and he's probably around your age. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, I was just wondering, coming out of a SAP school, how did it influence your writing in English? Because at that time, Dunman High was quite different from what these schools are today. Um, I was just curious, uh, and why? Um, uh, I'm just curious, how, how did that turn out? Um, I think, well, I, I was not in SAP, I mean, the, how do you call it, CL1, I was still in CL2, oh. so it was a more... So what is CL1, CL2? CL2 is Chinese language as first language, and uh, CL2 is uh, Chinese as second language. So I was in a one or two classes that still had Chinese as second language. So I guess, um, to me, English was still the emphasis. And, and, uh, uh, definitely better than that. Uh, better in English than my horrific Chinese. Um, there are some words in my uh, nephew's primary four oral that I, I couldn't read. So I feel like, okay, thankfully for for the iPhone and the apps these days. So, so you didn't go to a Chinese school in Johor? It was actually a Chinese school. It was a St. Joseph's Chinese school. Okay. But even then, my Chinese wasn't as good. <laughs> What, what kind of books, I'm, I'm curious, what kind of books were you reading then? I mean, the first uh, kind of um, um, fictional books that you read when you were young. We haven't talked about this. I think it's one of those kind of things that always puzzled me when I try to figure out what, is, what are the influences behind your writing. Okay, I think uh, when I was very young, I read a lot of comic books and uh, fantasy books. The comic books were mainly the British variety. Okay, you so know, then the... Well, not 2080. No, not 2080. 2080 was <laughs> too expensive, <laughs> in, especially in Malaysia. Um, Gila, Gila. No, no, not the Malay stuff, I'm afraid. Right. Mm. Um, I, I'm a big fan of fantasy and science fiction. I read all, I, I think it's a boss. Um, and then, of course, The Hobbit, which I think I reread four or five times. A lot of other fantasy and so on. Mm. Which which writers or which book writer do you feel ha has um, influenced you most from that time? I think after that, when I started um, reading wi more widely, especially in the US, um, I started to read Anne Tyler, and I was quite blown away by how she could look at the minute of everyday life and uh, bring it up. Uh. I mean, there was something so beautiful about the, you know, the, the settings, the cities that she brought in the right thing. Uh, you can feel, feel her, her love for, for the setting, uh, her knowledge of it. I thought, wow, this, this, it's quite something. I guess when I wrote um, the beating, I tried to, uh, and Gong case, I tried to tap into that vein uh, to, to have a certain Endearment towards, towards the, the setting you're, you're writing about. Um, I guess in uni as well, I started reading more widely. Uh, inevitably, you know, you read uh, Raymond Carver, and by his past style, you know that oh, I don't have a great vocabulary, vocabulary. So um, he could do wonders with such sparse language, which I found encouraging. I guess for for, for a writer. Um, for a new writer and all. Um, also, I enjoy a lot of Kafka and such, which, which I think once first time I discovered Kafka, is quite mind blowing about po possibility of narratives, of stories, how they can be extended beyond uh, the typical form. Mm. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of Kafka movements in the beating, uh, uh, in a way that's not as, as strong in. in but this story, some of these are, are quite um, surreal in many ways uh, when, when you read them. Yeah, you're not the only one who mentions that the, having a Singapore Lit Prize competition encourages writing. Colin said exactly the same thing. It's very telling that the moment the SLP evaporated, it stopped, I think, publishing fiction. Yeah. You mean uh, Colin? So, and, and a lot of people stopped, basically. So do, do you feel that that is 
a factor and do you feel that if we revive the SLP as it was, the current one, you know, it's not it's not the same because it doesn't encourage new work. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that uh, it will help uh, bring out more fiction, which is kind of missing? Oh, I definitely think it will. I think Singaporeans are very trained into to A, be competitive and work very well with their lines. I know my mentees are. <laughs> okay, the first part of that is, in what way is the ACF different or the same to that kind of competitive structure? I think the ACF... Uh, you have to tell the rest okay, of the ACF. Yeah. Sorry, the ACF is a arts creation fund. Uh, the NAC gives up grants for uh, written, uh, literary works now, uh, from poetry, fiction and uh, graphic novels as well. Uh, the beating... Uh, I was able to do the beating because uh, of the grant uh, the first, the first round was it 2010? Is it nine? Nine. Yeah. So it saved me some time from doing crappy freelance job to um, spend more time writing. So that was a a, a great thing. I thought. Yeah, people tend to forget that writers need to eat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they they think that the, mm -hmm. the the food just magically appears on the table. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>